Assalamu alaikum dear learners this is Shaukat Kabir from SRM Welkin High Secondary School Soko today we will talk about a very beautiful poem by Wordsworth that is Daffodils before we move on to the poem let's talk about Wordsworth a bit it is William Wordsworth whom you know as a romantic poet or a nature poet romantic poet When we talk of the word romantic, mean is the one who derives pleasure from routine things. Ahead, we will see to that in the poem. Or we have a nature poet. Mean is the one who shows his love for nature in his poems. William Wordsworth. He was born on 7th of April 1770 and he died on his own birthday sorry he died on 23rd of April 1850 I just mentioned 23rd of February sorry 23rd of April actually it was Shakespeare now coming to the point that is daffodils first of all we will see to the title of the point Earlier, the poem was titled as is given in the first line. I wandered lonely as a cloud. When Wordsworth wrote this poem, he titled it as I wandered lonely as a cloud. But later on, it was changed by the people like Francis Palgrave, who, in his book The Golden Treasury, named it as the daffodils citing the reason that this title is talking about loneliness thus this title is talking about being sad when we have on the contrary the different thing coming up when we see the whole poem that is it talks about the beauty of the daffodils it talks about how the daffodils bring happiness in the life of 
the point. So that is why it was decided by all the scholars that the poem best suits as the daffodils. Now we talk about the theme of the poem. In this poem, the poet clearly talks about nature and its relation to man. So, we can talk of this poem to be a nature poem. On the other side, we do talk of this poem to be a lyric. Lyric. Lyrics are the poems where we talk about our emotions. So, we can call this poem a lyric because over here we do see that Wordsworth has expressed his emotions and he has expressed them explicitly. Another part of the poem that we have to discuss over here that is its structure. When we talk of the structure of the poem, the poem has been divided into four stanzas. With each stanza having six lines. The rhyme scheme of the point stands as A B A B C C In total, the poem has got 24 lines. Over here, we did see the outline of the poem Daffodils or you label it as the daffodils or you talk of it to be I wonder lonely as a cloud. Let's read the poem and move on with the paraphrase. Here we have the poem. I wondered lonely as a cloud that floats on high over vales and hills when all at once I saw a crowd, a whole a host of golden daffodils beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way, they stretched in never-ending line along the margin of a bay. Ten thousand saw I at a glance, tossing their heads in sprightly dance. The waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not be but gay in such a jocund company. I gazed and gazed but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. For often when on my couch I lie, in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. And then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. So here we have a beautiful poem, that is daffodils. In this poem, we do notes that the poet talks of himself to be a cloud. As he says here, I wondered, wonder. W A N D E R. We have two words of such sort. That is W O N D E R. Wonder and wonder. When we talk of this particular word, that is wonder, we read it like this one. Wonder. Wonder. So he says here, I wondered. 
I wandered lonely as a cloud. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high over vales and hills. Over here, we do see that the poet is making use of the figures of speech to talk best of the things over here. Let us see to that. When he says here, I wandered lonely as a cloud. The poet is making use of the simile. Simile is a comparison where we are making use of as or like. So he compares himself to the clouds. Those clouds that float on high or bales and hills. So he says here, I wonder lonely as a cloud. Wonder, again I will put it like this one. I wonder. Wonder means to move from one place to another place aimlessly. Without any aim. Walk in an aimless way. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high over veils. Veils. It's veils. Veils means valleys. High over veils and hills. When all at once I saw a crowd. I saw a crowd. While moving from one place to another place without any aim. While moving from one place to another place, whether it were bales or hills, I saw a crowd. He encounters a crowd. Usually we do talk of crowd of people. But over here, the poet personifies the daffodils. He makes use of a poetic device that is personification. So, he personifies the daffodils. He talks of them to be. Uh, uh, I saw a crowd of the daffodils. A host of golden daffodils. A host. Again, a host use of personification. As if there were some friends of his to receive him over there. That's why we do talk of these two things to be the Personification. Moon ahead, beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Beside. Then another one there is besides. Let's see to this one. Beside. Beside is a preposition. Means by the side. But at the same time, we do talk of another word that is besides. Most, most often, we have seen people confusing these two words, beside and besides. No doubt, both the two are the prepositions. But the meanings are different. Here we have besides, that is when we talk of in addition to. We do talk of besides to be an adverb. That is apart from. So he reads the things like this one. Beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. So the host, so the crowd of the daffodils, they were there beside the lake. They were there beneath the trees. They were fluttering and dancing in the breeze, the soft winds, breeze, the soft winds. Then we move on to the next part of the poem. That is, he talks of these daffodils to be continuous. So he says here, continuous as the stars that shine, continuous. As the stars that shine. When he says here continuous. The daffodils were continuous. As continuous as the stars. When he says as the stars. Again he beautifully makes use of the simile. So as continuous as the stars. 
that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way. Milky Way here we talk of, you know Milky Way. Milky Way means the myriad of stars. Then moving on, they stretch it in never ending line. They, they again refers to the daffodils. So you see, earlier we did talk about it, that the poem was earlier titled as I Wandered Lonely as a Cloud. I did tell you at that time that the poem was, that the title rather, was talking of one side of the things. But when we move ahead, when we move ahead, we do see that the poem is eloquent about the daffodils. So it was titled as judiciously as the daffodils. Here we say, they, again we talk of the daffodils, they, they stretch it in never ending line along the margin of a bay. Then he uses another poetic device, 10,000, 10,000, he says, 10,000 saw I at a glance. When he uses this figure of speech, when he uses this poetic device, he we talk of this poetic device to be hyperbole. Hyperbole. We say here 10,000, despite the fact that Wordsworth didn't count those daffodils. At that time, he was not out there to count. There were 1, 2, 3, 10, uh, 20, 100, 200, 500, 10,000. Thousand or anything else like that. No, he did it. He just imagines them to be 10,000 because there were lots of them. They were continuous. That's why he, he used a figure of speech that is hyperbole. So 10,000 saw I at a glance tossing their heads in sprightly dance. See this tossing their heads in sprightly dance. We talk of the daffodils again. They were dancing over there. They were happy. As if they are the humans. So, when we talk of anything like this one, we are talking over here. We do say that the poet has used personification. So, my dear students, here we move on to Another part of the poem, the waves beside them dance, the waves beside them dance, but they outdid the sparkling waves in clay. So you have to put it like this one, G-L-E-E, -E. clay, that is happiness. So he says here, the waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A point could not be but gay in such a jocund company. If you are given a, such a beautiful company, if you are given such a happy company, if you are given a company of the friends who are enjoying the things, you are left with no other option than to be happy. So that's what the poet does. He tells us here, I cannot do anything other than being a happy person. So that's why he says here, a poet could not be but gay in such a jocund company. So when he says here, jocund company, as if it is the company of the friends. So it is again personification. After this, he says, I gazed and gazed, I gazed and gazed, gazed and gazed. G sound, G sound is using over here. G, when we have the repetition of the constant sounds, we call it alteration. Had it been the vowel sounds, we would have called it assonance. Like 10,000. 
it is the example uh, we do have in this one we do have example of assonance so you have if we have the vowel sounds repeated over there that's called assonance if we have consonant sounds repeated over there like this one gaze and gaze we do talk of it to be alliteration so I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. Show! Although there wasn't any show, it was all there at that time. But it is Wordsworth who finds it to be a show which was going on at that time. Once he reaches over there, He finds himself mesmerized. That's why he says here, I gazed and I gazed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. He actually wants to tell us that at that time, when Wordsworth was over there, he had not actually realized what he is actually looking at. He had not realized at that time what the things are giving me over there. That's why he tells us here, I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. Now he tells us here, for often when on my couch I lie, in vacant or in pensive mood, when he has nothing to do, or when the poet is sad, whenever such a thing comes to him, whenever he finds himself in such a situation, what the poet does is, they flash upon that inward eye. They flash upon that inward eye. Boy talks of his mind. What? The daffodils. 10,000 daffodils. Countless daffodils. The jocund company. All these things flash upon the inward eye of the poet. That is the mind of the poet. That's why he says here, For often when on my couch I lie, in vacant, when he has nothing to do at all, or he is sad, what happens? Those daffodils come to his mind. He is reminded of those daffodils. And he says here, which is the bliss of solitude. It's the bliss of solitude. Loneliness. So in a manner we do see over here that poet actually justifies his definition of the poem wherein he says emotions recollected in tranquility. So in a manner the poet reaches over this over to this uh, definition which he has given. So moving on, he says here, and then my heart with pleasure fills. So when this jock and company, when these countless daffodils, when these 10,000 daffodils come to my mind, what happens? He tells us here, my heart with pleasure fills. He is pleasure, filled with pleasure. He turns happy. Again, I would like to move to the title of the poem, wherein we were given the title as I wandered lonely as a cloud. It was talking of loneliness, but Francis Palgrave in his book, The Golden Treasury, was right to change the title as the daffodils. Because over here, we do see that loneliness has got something opposite to it, that is happiness, that is pleasure. So we have the title judiciously being given over here as the daffodils. So he says here, and then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. So the poet becomes one with those daffodils. So he talks of these daffodils over there. He is very much happy over there from being lonely and over here we have the poem ending up on a positive note that is happiness, that is pleasure. That's it from 
me over here about the daffodils. Inshallah, we'll meet in the next video and we will be talking about some other poem by some other writer. Till then, thank you very much.